Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to what will probably be the last one of these for a little while, just in case until the uh, next sort of series of these is coming out. Um, hopefully in the new year, hopefully not too far away. Um, they seem to be doing a couple every every three months or something. Um, but yeah, pretty much all caught up with this line now. Really, really excited to open this one up. Um, next video, we'll be putting together Sauron and taking a look at that humongous figure. I'm really excited. Uh, the Ringwraith. Nazgul, this one looks awesome. I remember back in whenever the Fellowship of the Ring came out, I got I went out and bought a uh, my very first Lord of the Rings figure, the Toy Biz ones, and it was actually a Ring Wraith. I just I was so blown away by how they were, were portrayed on screen, how they looked. They were you know fearsome. They were nasty looking. They were just completely terrifying me as a younger as a younger lad um, but yeah really looking forward to cracking this one open um, I'll probably end up displaying this one with my uh, with my toy biz witch king ring wraith which still holds up as a fantastic figure um, yeah looking forward to it so let's uh without further ado let's open it up and take a look all right and here is the ring wraith and Nazgul out of the packaging and First things first is, uh, you know, just sort of getting a bit of a feel for the figure. I, I don't know, there's just something about it that's not hitting it for me. Aesthetically, it looks great. Posability wise, there's something that's just irking me a little bit, and I'll get onto that shortly. But yeah, firstly, we have the lower torso of Sauron. And uh, yeah, stay tuned because in the next video, we'll be putting this together. Really, really excited about that. Today it's looking fantastic. Nice detail all over. It's going to be a absolutely ripper of a figure when that comes together. So he does come with a couple of weapons. He comes with the sword that he is holding, which I believe oh, it's been such a long time since I've looked at all the uh, reference books and stuff that I have on on Lord of the Rings. So it's hard to define, with, determine which sword's which, but. I've, feel like that's the Witch King's sword, but I'm not sure. Um, does come with another one, which also could be <laughs> the Witch King's sword, I can't remember. I will I will quickly look this up afterwards, so don't at me, as they say. <laughs> but yeah, that looks nice. Um, a couple of clips up here. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be anywhere to attach that to on the figure. Uh, I thought there might be just a couple of like little hooks or pegs or something in amongst the robes that may may make that work same with the dagger this is the one that stabbed Frodo on Weathertop so yeah it has a has a little sheath but uh yeah unfortunately nowhere to really attach it on the figure that I can see it at this stage so we'll put them aside and take a look at the figure I will just remove this sword from his hand just so we can have a quick look at that. See a nicely detailed piece. Nicely weathered, looks good. All right, so let's take a look here. What have we got? So I like what they've actually done with the head. Um, in fact, you can still turn it and these sort of softer bits sort of drape in front. And uh, yeah, it sort of blends in with the uh, Blends in with the rest of the the robes. It does seem to be on a, just a ball ball joint underneath there. Uh, the sort of hollowness of the head. You can sort of see in there with the, with the right light. You can just sort of see clearly in there like that. But with with the right shadow, it actually looks really effective like that. Uh, so yeah, the sculpting all over is really nice. I'm just looking at his belts, bits and pieces under there, leg armor, he's fully armored up under there which is good, that looks nice, a nice effort there to sort of sculpt up those legs, uh, the hands also uh, armored, which look nice. back so there's this extra fabric sort of draped over the back really well sculpted 
I like the way it sort of sits there like this. I think it looks good. But it's when you want to start posing him into a, you know, an action pose holding the sword. That's where the problem comes into line. That is this sleeve. <laughs> See what I mean? I just, that's one thing that sort of irks me a little bit. So you've really got to bring that out like that. Yeah, this it's no real easy, easy way to pose that out without having that sleeve sort of, I don't know, I just feel like having it sort of drop from there would have been like having it straight down at that, but then, yeah, it's a tricky one. It is a tricky one. Um, there would have, I'm sure there were a lot of discussions there with the design team at Diamond Select trying to work out what the best aesthetic for that's going to be. Um, and they obviously went with the sort of relaxed arms. Um, but yeah, I, I, I wish there was another way just to uh, be able to pose that up a little bit more. Um, because also just where the hand is situated, it's, it's hard with the, uh, you know, that just wants to hit in there. It's the same, same, same issue here with uh, this hand. You know, there's some articulation in the hand, so you can get them to sort of move a little bit. There's some up and down articulation on a on a swivel joint there, ball hinge. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, same, similar sort of thing. You know, it's you'd love to be able to pose this sort of across. You know what? That yeah, not quite. It still wants to just sort of drape across. But, um, you know, that's probably as close as you're going to get. There's definitely not going to be any sort of two-armed sword holding poses here with this one, um, which is a little bit of a bummer, but it's, it's a nice looking figure though. You know, it looks good. But yeah, just, just that sort of, it, I know it's not an oversight because it's, you know, they've decided on an aesthetic for that and how it's designed and everything like that and how, you know, they expect people to display them, so... But yeah, just... I don't know. I'm not sure how else you do that. I'm no toy design expert, but... Otherwise, the figure looks great. He's gonna look fantastic on the shelf. Um, really nicely displayed. I think it's gonna look really good next to standing in front of Sauron. Especially if I get the uh, Witch King with his with his crown, I think he'll look fantastic. <clears throat> but yeah, weathering and detail, everything is really nice. I like the sort of frayed edges on all the on all the robes, even the sleeves there. But yeah, very very interesting. I'm going to check out some more reviews on this one to sort of see what other people have thought about it. Um, see if anyone has come up with a bit of a fix for it, just to, you know, just have a, just have a look around the internet. And maybe they can do a variant at some point where we can, uh, you know, change it up a little bit. That'd be, that'd be cool. Because yeah, it's a fantastic looking figure. I love the ring wraiths. They're just terrifying and awesome. <laughs> So yeah, I'd love to hear what you think, guys. Please send it in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Um, where could they have improved? What what would you do to change it if you could? Or are you happy with, with how it is? You know, like I said, the most part is going to be displayed on a shelf. I'll probably have him like this with his, with his sword out. Put the dagger in that hand as well. Dual wielding, being a badass. But uh, yeah, give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. I'm building Sauron next. Stay tuned for that. I'm really, really looking forward to doing that. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for maybe the next couple of days, I think, if I'm, if I'm doing my equations correctly, if I'm doing my maths correctly, it'll be out in the next couple of days. So stay tuned for that, folks, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.